All right, so when we left off in the last video introducing the animation assignment, I was about halfway through my storyboard. And to repeat, a story, a narrative needs three things. It needs a character, it needs a setting, and it needs the illusion of time passing. So a character can be anything, but it's something that the viewer experiences the narrative through. So a character can be a tree in a forest, right? And if we kind of focus on that tree, and then what we see is what that tree experiences as maybe the, the setting changes around it. Maybe there's a fire, and that tree almost gets burned, but doesn't, right? But its, its limbs get charred. Then that tree is the character. A character doesn't need to have eyes or, or expressions, right? Um, a character can be really simple. And a setting can also be incredibly simple. In fact, most comic strips, if you look at them, and Garfield's a great example, um, they, they often just show the character with no background at all. But if Garfield is like just sitting on a line <laughs> and there's a lasagna next to him, we know what that setting is. We know it's inside, right? If Garfield is in just a blank white square and he has a scarf on, we know he's outside. So setting is something that the viewer creates when they see an image. Does that make sense? So it doesn't mean you have to always detail every aspect of your environment for us to have a setting established. Now, if you just have character and you just have setting, you have what I call a postcard, right? That's not a story yet. So the last thing you need is the illusion of time passing, and that happens with sequential panels. So comic books do this, right? So the character will move on the setting, and we know that time is passing because we're passing from one panel over the panel border into another panel. Each time we jump the gutter, time has passed, right? Might be a lot of time, might be a little bit of time. In animation, this is different than comic books, even though storyboards look a lot like comic books because we are going to control how quickly one, one frame changes to the next frame. Professional animation does this at 24 frames per second, right? We're gonna do that, at, we're gonna do it closer to uh, 0.3 frames um, or 0.3 seconds per frame. So a little bit slower, but that's usually how GIFs work. Right? And we can make it any timing we want, but that will be my default. And you can make a GIF animation that's as smooth as professional animation. It just takes a lot more frames than you might have the patience for doing. Okay, so when we're storyboarding, our requirements for this assignment are not just that you animate something. It's that you animate something that you've already created. But you are allowed to bring in new aspects, new attributes, new assets is how I call them. And the other requirement of your animation is it has to showcase a transformation of some type. It's not just a movement test. It's not just showing that things can move. It's showing things changing state from beginning, middle to end. So that can be a change in your character, a change in your setting, um, a change in interaction. You can introduce new characters, right? So my idea is to start here with an establishing shot of my landscape. And I'm just going to use a lot more than I need to. I'm going to use my landscape and my character here. Maybe my cloud will even make an appearance. I don't know. But you just have to use one thing you've designed. That could be your shape composition, your cartoon jumble, your, your landscape, your creature, your cloud. So I start with an establishment, but my character is already camouflaged in it, right? Um, my first action is introduction of a bug. So I had to pull a new reference for a bug. I got that from Pixabay. Kind of an alien looking bug. And then my character is going to pop out. This is the next action that happens within this setting. And reveal itself. And then the character's tongue is going to come out and head towards the bug. And that's where I left off. And so now the character is simply going to eat the bug, right? So the bug is now going to be, you know, in the character's mouth. And that's the middle of the of the storyboard, which is kind of the middle of the animation. You know, bug in mouth. So beginning, middle, 
n. Now, just that is a bit of a transformation, right? Not so much a transformation for my character, except that his tongue is going to transform and roll out of his mouth and then flick back in. But it's a transformation for this bug character, right? He started alive. In the, in the middle, he's eaten. And in the end, he's dead. <laughs> That's a transformation. But I'm going to continue it. So I say bug gets eaten. It's always important to have these little border notes to keep you focused on what your main story is. Okay, then as my character is going back down to hide, I'm going to have another huge version of my character pop up. So new large character. Sometimes I'll call them, you know, character X, character Y, character Z. So I'll say character Z pops up. And then large character Z is going to open his mouth, flick out his tongue, and I'll just put it simply, uh, character Z eats. character Y. So I have people eating each other all over the place, right? That's a transformation. All happening in the same setting. Then I'm going to have character Z settle down. And notice my sketches can be looser and looser as I am more and more clear about what I'm doing. So character Z settles down into the environment and kind of camouflages itself. And I'm going to say sets to reset, which means I try to get back to the first frame as much as possible. so that it can start again. Now, it is not required in your assignment sheet that your GIF animation loops seamlessly, right? So it just plays endlessly without ever knowing where the beginning is. But if you do think of your story as setting to reset in the end, even if it just fades to black and then fades back up, then it will loop more seamlessly. There won't be a jump cut between your last frame and your first frame. Because GIF animations, you want to play more than once, right? when we're looking at them, especially because our animation is probably going to take three or four seconds. And so in order to take it all in, you need it to play a few times. So now that we have our storyboard, and I'll come around and help you with your storyboards, it's easy to get too ambitious, right? But basically, if you can limit it to nine square frames, three on three, thinking of beginning, middle, and end, that is something that you will be able to accomplish with some skill, even though we're learning some new techniques here. Now you have to think about, okay, this is our plan. This is the storyboard. And you're going to submit this as your first storyboard. Now I need to think, okay, if this were a play, what actors do I need to hire? But because we're animating, these are assets that we can either draw ourselves, we can use from things we've already created, or we can try to go out and find things to use. So I went to Pixabay, Creative Commons open, and found the bug. So that's my first character asset that's new for this assignment. Next, I need to go grab my other characters, right? So I have um, my second assignment where I created my creature. And we've gone back to this a lot. This PNG that's perfectly cut out, right, that we use for our cloud, that we use for our creature scape, that is... That is our character right there, or at least for me. So I'm going to copy that by holding down Option into my Assignment 5 folder, because this is my lead actor right here. And just like um, Lindsay Lohan did in The Parent Trap, this actor is going to play double duty. So it's going to be the small version, character Y, and the big version, character Z. And I might give it like a new makeup job or something. We will see. So these are my beginning assets. What other assets now? I've hired my, my actors, but I need a setting. 
I need a, a backdrop painter, right? So I'm going to go all the way back to assignment one. And I could steal just the flat JPEG for that. If all my action is going to happen on top, like this is a curtain behind my action, or I can go to my PSD, which has all those layers broken down, or I might go back to my creature scape, right? And my PSD for my creature scape, which already simplified the layers of my landscape in order for my character to, to be nested into it, right? So that's a perfect one because that's like a full stage set where it has things in the foreground, things in the middle ground, things in the background. And I know where it already has like little pathways for my actors to walk. So I've got my setting, I've got my characters. What other assets do I need? Well, if my setting is going to change, right, I might go back to my assignment one resources, my references. There's a reason we keep all this stuff. And remember, I kept folders for all those different parts. So for the middle ground dust cloud, I have all of these different high resolution, you know, cloud images that might help. Because what I'm thinking is it doesn't make sense for my landscape the way it is to just stay perfectly still. It might make sense for yours. But for my landscape, those clouds are there. They're going to need to move a little bit. They're going to need to change. And so I might think of some of these assets and copy them over into my assignment five. Uh, I like this, this red and blue one. Let's do that. And then I also found this, which if I view in a web browser, and I just always use Safari to test my GIFs because I feel bad for Safari and I don't use it for anything else. So if you open up a, a GIF um, animation in Safari, it will show kind of centered. And you see it's not huge resolution, but it doesn't need to be. But I've already got, you know, many, many frames here. And you can animate with GIF animations. They're all raster files. And their resolution isn't great, but GIF animations resolution isn't going to be great. And it's just going to be soft, softer. So that can be another asset I use. So what do we do first? Well, we have our sketch. That's important. That's going to be vital to go back to. And you have it in your sketchbook. Then I'm going to create a new folder, which is our assets folder. And these are all your different characters. Think of your characters as puppets you're going to use. And then all of your settings. Remember, you need character setting and the illusion of time passing. And I thought this gradient was pretty. You know, just something as simple as this. This is like stage lighting. This can be an asset. It's going to focus us more on the middle of the scene than at the edges. And I'm going to show you how we build all of these. All right. So now we can build a Photoshop file. And what I'm going to do is actually not... Hmm, how do I want to do it? I think this time I want to control everything from the beginning. So what I'm going to do is because I know my setting, I already have worked out. And if you're using your landscape, you can do it that way. I'm going to go to my assets folder and I'm going to open up that copy I made of assignment three, my creature scape. But immediately I'm going to change it. Because this assignment three was made to be printed at full resolution, you know, at, a, at at least 11 by 14 inches. And if I try to animate with that full resolution, not only is it way bigger than it needs to be, because animations can only be shown on screen, it's going to be really slow and really burdensome. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to image size, image, image size, and I'm going to change it from being 350 pixels per inch to being 150 pixels per inch in its resolution. So less than half. And then I'm going to change its height to only being 8 inches, not 10 inches. And I took it down from 60 megabytes to only 6 megabytes. Say OK. Now I have something that I can start to work with. 